Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, dear students. Welcome you all in PIST virtual learning system. This lecture is for grade first year, boys and girls, both wings. Dear students, I welcome you, your first year at PIST college. I am extremely happy and wishing you a bright future. May Allah bless you all. Dear students, this is our first video computer lecture and I am your computer teacher, Mrs. Afshin. This lecture is about introduction of computer system. Students, this is our recommended textbook, textbook of computer science for grade first year and it is recommended by National Book Foundation, Islamabad. So, the first unit in the first chapter covers overview of computer system in which we will discuss the different points and different topics. So let's start overview of computer system. So in this chapter, we will discuss these points, identify computing devices, define the term computer and its basic operations, define and classify types of computer system, differentiate between hardware and software, describe application software and system software, define the term licensed software, open source software, shareware and freeware software, define input output devices and understanding their working. And in the last, we will discuss the differentiate between hard copy and soft copy. Now let's start with introduction to computers and the definition of the computer. Computer is an electronic device that accepts data as input, perform operations as processing on data at very high speed and produce the result as output. So here we use the term input. Input means that when you enter something into the computer with the help of the input devices, like we have keyboard, we have mouse, and with the help of these input devices, we can enter our data. After input and after entering the instruction, our data passed to the processing device. After processing, your data is converted into the output. So basically computer is a programmable machine that executes a programmed list of instruction that provided by the user. Your computers are composed of different components. When we talk about the computer system, so the term system, what does it mean? System means that when different components combine and work together with the help of uh, different components, when different components work together to achieve some common objective is called a system. In computer system, we have different components which work together to achieve some common objective. And the common objective is data processing. And we have different components like we have a central processing unit, the CPU. This is the most important device and the component of your computer system. Central processing unit basically is used to control all activities inside your computer system. It takes input, process the input and convert into the output. Then we have input devices. In our computer system, we have different types of input devices like keyboard, mouse. So these are the basic input devices. Mouse is a pointing device and the keyboard is a text data entry device. Then we have output devices, output devices like monitor and the printer. Monitor is a soft copy output device and the printer is a hard copy output device. Primary storage devices, primary storage devices means that when you will store your data inside the computer system. So we have RAM and ROM as a primary storage devices. Secondary storage devices means that any other storage devices which we can attach to our computer system like USB, external hard disk, memory card, CDs, like this. Communication devices. Communication devices basically are used to connect two and more than two computers with each other. 
so communication devices are modem and nic card so computer system is composed of different components which work together to achieve some common objective so that's why it is called a system now we have a next topic that is computing devices all machines components or devices that contains embedded specialized computers are called computing devices all these devices contain embedded computer chips which allow these devices to do special computing tasks for example we have atm machine so atm machine gives banking transaction facility and with the help of atm machine we can withdraw our money so we have a small chip and a microprocessor here in these devices that's why these are intelligent devices and process our instruction we have digital alarm clock we have digital washing machine and we have microwave refrigerator kids toys cd player and smartphones and cell phones all these are computing devices which have the small microprocessor chip and some sort of memory the primary memory which can save your data and instructions now the next topic is basic operation of a computer basic operation means that how your computer can work how it can execute the instruction so as we know that input means that to enter any sort of data and instruction into the computer so with the help of input devices like keyboard and mouse we can enter our data to the computer and this operation is called input operation input operation means that accepting data for processing from an input device so we have different input devices in our computer system so most common input devices are keyboard and mouse so i will repeat it mouse is a pointing device with the help of mouse you can select anything and with the help of keyboard you can enter your text and data we have many other input devices and we are using like the webcam digital cam cd usb all these are input devices which we can attach with our computer system our mic with the computer this is also a sound input device then after input operation we have processing operation processing operation means that performing automatic and logical operation automatic operation includes addition subtraction multiplication and division while logical operation include comparison of different values and decision making so processing means that when you will enter your instruction into the computer system so after that it will pass for the processing operation and the cpu and the microprocessor is a processing device which will process your instruction and this is called a processing operation it can perform various tasks like automatic and logical operation so automatical operation means that all kind of mathematical operation like addition subtraction multiplication division all mathematical operation and logical operation means that the comparison okay and in logical operation you may include and or not operation as well then we have output operation output operation means that sending results to an output device so after processing your results are ready your output is ready so this is your output operation when you are sending your result to your output device so we have different types of output devices so soft copy output device is monitor which is used to display your result on the screen and hard copy output device is a printer which is used to display your result in the form of hard copy and the physical form which you can touch and move easily means you can take the print out then we have a 
storage operation. Storage operation means that writing data to a storage device such as hard disk or USB or a flash drive. So on storage operation, we can save our data. We can save our output on any storage location, like on a hard disk, on a USB, on a flash drive, on a memory card, okay? The purpose of a computer system is to accept data, process it, and as a result of processing, produce output in the form of useful information. The input unit of computer presents data to the processor for processing. The results of processing of the data are displayed on the monitor screen, printed on paper or sent to any other output or storage devices. This is a block diagram which display how computer operation works. So you will enter the input and it will pass to the CPU for the processing and your computer will accept the data and then process the data. And then the result will pass after the processing to the output unit for further processing and output. And backing storage devices are used to take the backup and take the storage of your data and instruction. So, we can discuss it in the form of the graphical representation of the basic operation of a computer. So first of all, we will enter the input with the help of the input devices. After entering the input, it will pass to the processor and the CPU for the processing. And after processing, it is converted into the output and then passed to the storage devices for the storage and the backing storage devices. But when we talk about the input, so as an input, we can enter data or instruction. Now, what is a data? Draw facts and figure is called a data. Basically, data is meaningless. Raw facts and figures. And with the help of the input devices, we can enter this raw data into the computer. After processing, the CPU and the processor will perform any task on the data. Then your data is converted into the meaningful information and that meaningful information is called information that output is called the meaningful information so data is a raw facts and figures and information is a processed form of your data which is meaningful we can understand it easily now come to the next topic and the next heading is classification of digital computers. We can classify our digital computers on different factors. It can be based on physical size, cost, and speed. So based on these factors, computers are classified into four categories. Supercomputer, mainframe computers, mini computers, and microcomputers. So these are the journal classification which are based on the size of the computer and the speed of the computer. So we can classify and we can use according to our requirement that if we want to execute the billions of instruction, which computer is suitable. If we want to execute the trillions of instruction at one time, which computer is suitable for our company. So it depends on your size and requirement. So let's start with the supercomputer a supercomputer is a computer with a high level of performance as compared to a general purpose computer some supercomputers are the largest computer most expensive computer but they are powerful computers process complex calculation designing and controlling of complicated machine so they can design and control the complicated machines such as rocket and fighter planes. Supercomputers require huge amount of calculations to be performed at high speed. So the largest and the fastest supercomputers are also used in nuclear research, weather forecasting, and in Pakistan, supercomputers are used in many organizations like Atomic Energy Research Center. Supercomputers manufacturers are 
The best known supercomputers are built by the Cray, American Supercomputers Manufacturers and IBM. This is the diagram of IBM supercomputer. Now, come to the mainframe computer. The second important classification of the digital computers are mainframe computer. Mainframes are also called big iron. They are powerful computers used for large information processing jobs. These are larger, more expensive, and more powerful computers compared to mini computers, but less powerful computers than supercomputers. These computers are used in large corporations, banks, universities, and scientific laboratories. A mainframe computer can execute about trillions of instructions per second. Means that at the one time, a mainframe computer can execute trillions of instruction per time per second and can support thousands of users. Like in banks, they have a mainframe computers. So at the same time, the trillions of users can attach and can access and can do the transaction at the same time. So multiple and the thousands of users can attach with the mainframe computers in universities and in scientific laboratories also. But it usually fills a large room, means that it needs a big air conditioning room because there are more peripheral devices are attached with the mainframe computers. The examples of mainframe computers are IBM Z Enterprise, EC12, EC196, and HP 16500 series. So this is the example of IBM Zip Z Enterprise computer. Now next classification of digital computer is mini computer. Computer that is smaller, less expensive and less powerful than a mainframe or supercomputer, but more expensive and the more powerful than a personal computer. Point to be remember, computer that is smaller, less expensive and less powerful than the mainframe computer or a supercomputer means that the mainframe and or supercomputer are more powerful. They can execute multiple instructions at the one time and thousands of users can attach with them, but more expensive, they are more expensive and more powerful than a personal. Mini computer is a more expensive and more powerful than a personal computer. So this is a one step higher to the personal computer. Mini computer can support hundred, hundreds of users at a time. They can execute billions of instruction per second. If you remember in mainframe, it can support thousands of users at a time, but it can support hundreds of users at a time. And mainframe computer can execute billions of instructions and it can execute Sorry, it can execute billions of instructions and mainframe computers can execute trillions of instructions per second. So mainframe computers are more high speed and more powerful rather than mini computers. Mini computers can support hundreds of users and they can execute billions of instructions per second. But they are more powerful rather than mini computer and the personal computer. So the last classification, so the mini computers user used for the scientific and engineering research, industrial process control, business transaction processing, file handling and database management. Examples of mini computers are IBM system 36, HP 3000 series. And this is the example of mini computer HP 3000. Now the last type of a digital computer is microcomputer. Microcomputer is a smallest and less, least expensive computer. Its small size is a result of LSI, large scale integration and 
VLSI very large scale integration technology. They can execute millions of instruction per second. It is very fast, but slower than many computers and mainframes. So microcomputer, basically, this is our current computer and the personal computer which we have like our PC. This is our PC, personal computer, our laptops. This is the example of a microcomputer. So microcomputer consists of system unit, keyboard, mouse, and monitor. Examples of the microcomputer are IBM ThinkPad, Dell XPS, HP Invoice Series, Apple Series. And this is the example of HP Invoice Series. A typically microcomputer consists of a keyboard, mouse, monitor, and a system unit. Microcomputer are used at home for personal use as well as for business application. A large amount of data and a large amount of variety of software is available for use on microcomputer. Microcomputer can easily fit on a desktop or in a briefcase in the form of laptop computer. Okay. Now, here is the last, last topic of our today's lecture, the modern use of computers in today's life. This is a very important. So right now and no a day, we are using all these devices. Mobile computing. Mobile computing, small portable devices that allow people to access data and information from anywhere in a wireless network system. It runs on batteries and have limited functionality. So nowadays, in our daily life, we are using all these devices, like we are using PDAs, personal digital assistants, tablet PC, tabs, smartphones. These are the smartphones, tablet PCs, and PDAs. So nowadays, we are interacting, we are using all these devices on daily basis okay so these are very important in our life and in today's life these are basically these are the mobile computing devices the smartphones have you know that the smartphones have microprocessor we have each and everything even all applications are available on your smartphone you can do each and everything on your smartphone, on your tabs. You can play games. You can access your data. You can do uh, messaging, audio, video, all type of application you can use on your smartphone, on your tablet PC. The next is the most latest and the important topic is Internet of Things IoT. Internet of Things is the interconnection between computer network and the physical devices to collect and exchange data. Devices used in the daily life can be equipped with the wireless connectivity and embedded with the software, sensor, cameras, microphones, and other instruments that enable them to collect and share data. All kinds of household items can be modified to work in an Internet of Things IoT system. These devices are known as smart devices and they are designed in such a way that they can interact with human beings through wireless connection. So in our home and in everywhere right now, we are interacting with the Internet of Things, IoT. We have lots of IoT devices, the smart devices. So we have smartphones, we have smart television, we have many other smart devices in our home and we are interacting with those devices. Smart home is a popular application of IoT in future. IoT will allow us to switch on air conditioning before reaching home or switch off lights after leaving home. There are homes equipped with the various types of electronic devices that can be controlled remotely with smartphones or computer through IoT system. So let's see this video. The Internet of Things, or IoT, is influencing our lifestyle from the way we react to the way we behave. From air conditioners that you can control with your smartphone, to smart cars providing the shortest route, or your smartwatch which is tracking your daily activities, 
IoT is a giant network with connected devices. These devices gather and share data about how they are used and the environment in which they are operated. It's all done using sensors. Sensors are embedded in every physical device. It can be your mobile phone, electrical appliances, vehicles, barcode sensors, traffic lights, and almost everything that you come across in day-to-day -day life. These sensors continuously emit data about the working state of the devices. But the important question is, how do they share this huge amount of data and how do we put this data to our benefit? IoT provides the common platform for all these devices to dump their data and a common language for all the devices to communicate with each other. Data is emitted from various sensors and sent to IoT platform to store you. IoT platform integrates the collected data from various sources, further analysis is performed on the data, and valuable information is extracted as per requirement. Finally, the result is shared with other devices for better user experience. Now, the next topic is cloud computing. The modern use of computer in today's life, the cloud computer is another very important thing which we are using now a day. So cloud computing means instead of buying and installing your own computer system and software at your workplace, you can get it as a service provided and managed by another company. You can perform your computing tasks through access to service over the internet. It does not matter where the hardware and software is located. It is just somewhere in the cloud. It is a way of outsourcing your computing requirement. The advantage of cloud computing is that you don't have to buy and maintain a complex computer system. This cuts cost of buying computers and peripherals. The disadvantage of cloud computing is that it requires a reliable, high-speed broadband connection functionality the whole time you are working. Another disadvantage of cloud computing is the privacy and the security risk of having valuable data on someone else's system is an unknown location. So let's see a video to check the importance of mobile cloud computing. Cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of IT resources via the internet with pay-as-you-go pricing. Instead of buying, owning, and maintaining physical data centers and servers, you can access technology services such as computing power, storage, and databases on an as-needed basis from a cloud provider like Amazon Web Services. Organizations of every type, size, and industry are using the cloud for a wide variety of use cases, such as data backup, disaster recovery, email, virtual desktops, software development and testing, big data analytics, and customer-facing web applications. For example, healthcare companies are using the cloud to develop more personalized treatments for patients. Financial services companies are using the cloud to power real-time fraud detection and prevention. And video game makers are using the cloud to deliver online games. Now come to the next modern use of computing today's life is data center. Data center is a centralized location for collecting, storing, processing, and distribution of vast amount of data. It consists of servers, routers, switch, and backup equipments. So the servers are basically the main computers which are used to hold your large amount of data and information. So every time we are connected with the server to access the data and information. Routers and switches are used to provide the best route and route your data on the network. They are used to provide the connectivity with the help of the router. We have a connection. Backup equipment is used to take the backup of your data and information. A data center facility usually requires air conditioning, smoke detection, and security entry. It may be housed in a room, an entire building, or a group of buildings. Organizations such as government agencies, banks, educational institutions, telecommunication companies, and social networking services use large amount of data and have requirement of data center. 
Many companies are moving their data center to cloud services to cut the cost of running their own computing networks and a server.